we're about to start the show, and you know the drill. If you've been here before and you have something important to share, please add a capital letter Q to your comment. And if you are watching live for the first time, please let us know by writing the word new, and we'll give you a nice little welcome. Enjoy the broadcast. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where it's all about connections, connections between ourselves, a community of English-speaking locals living here in Puerto Vallarta, and also connections with our city, our state, our country, Mexico's way of life, Mexico's culture. Um, we, as you know, go looking for all kinds of information that will help us connect with our surroundings. If this is your cup of tea, or your cup of coffee, please feel free to stick around for the next few minutes as we have some interesting news to share today. It is Monday, May 13, and um, and there are news. There are news, as always. It's glad, it's, it's good to see many of you here that I know and that I recognize, and we might as well get started with what we have, which is a few bits of news of course may is an interesting may uh, may is an interesting may paco wake up may is an interesting month here in puerto vallarta because oh why am i overloading Ooh, wait a second not good my levels were a little bit too high i hope this is a little better anyhow um may is an important month in our city as you know we celebrate The, the May Fiestas, which is something that happens throughout the state. But May is also the anniversary of Puerto Vallarta. Anniversary of what, you may ask? Well, um, this coming May 31st, Puerto Vallarta will celebrate its 106th anniversary as a municipality and its 56th anniversary as a city. And traditionally, the city organizes a big celebration, which is not to be confused with the May fiestas that we announced past week. So what is the city up to when it comes to the anniversary? Well, the only announcement that the city has made at this point is that the Tucson, 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 we don't pronounce the C here, Tucson Symphony Orchestra is coming to our city, which is, of course, no small announcement, according to this news item. There will be a performance in um, at Plaza Lázaro Cárdenas and another one at, in Marina Vallarta. But as of yet, there are no further details. I tried to Google the Tucson Symphony Orchestra to see if there were any news on their end, and I couldn't find anything just yet. But as you know, soon enough, we will get more information to that effect. This past Saturday, we mentioned the heat wave coming to our state. And while it was warm in Puerto Vallarta, it did not feel much warmer than usual. However, things were different for Guadalajara, where this past Saturday, temperature records for this time of year were broken with parts of, Puerto, of Guadalajara experiencing 40 degrees centigrade along with parts of Tonalá and Tlaquepaque, where there are not that many trees. And it is worth remembering that trees help regulate the temperature of a city. So whenever people go around trimming trees, it is bound to affect our temperature. I also found out that the annual Bahia de Banderas Wind Festival, which we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, is finally here, well, this coming weekend, according to one of the organizers. This is an excellent opportunity to head over to Bucerías, north of Puerto Vallarta, and watch kite surf enthusiasts take over the waves. Uh, and the event will take place from Friday to Sunday this coming weekend. Um, no specific information was provided, but of course, I'm sure that we will get an update before we get to the weekend. 
And here are some good news for anyone planning to visit Mexico City anytime in the future. If you find yourself in the historic downtown area, you'll be pleased to learn that the Zócalo is now pedestrian only. All vehicular traffic has been removed from the Zócalo. Let me clear my throat and I'll tell you why. Oh, that felt good. So the Zócalo is the common name for the main square in Mexico City, and its official name is Plaza de la Constitución or Constitution Plaza. Prior to the colonial period, this was the main ceremonial center in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. And this is a reference photo, of course, that I borrowed from Wikipedia. So you can see cars all over the place but all the vehicles have been eliminated. You can also see the Catedral Metropolitana or Metropolitan Cathedral. And of course, this is the Palacio de Gobierno or Government Palace. This is where President Lopez Obrador has his office and where he actually lives. One of the things that Lopez Obrador introduced during his presidential period is he shut down Mexico's Los Pinos or White House, which used to be the residence occupied by the president of Mexico. During Lopez Obrador's uh, government, he shut it down, turned it into a cultural center. And we don't know what's going to happen with uh, Los Pinos. Once his presidential term is over, we don't know if he will continue, if the future president of Mexico or the next president of Mexico will continue living at the Palacio de Gobierno. It will be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, but now let's take a quick look at the weather forecast here in Puerto Vallarta to see what's going on out there. Um, GLaDOS or GLaDOS, I'm not sure. <clears throat> GLaDOS and I had a thing once. It did not end well. There was cake everywhere. I did Google that term and it, it's, it's from a video game. So since I don't know the video game, I'm not going to dive into this. I will tell you it's 28 degrees. Aye, 28 degrees. It's, it's not even 11 o'clock in the morning. Humidity is at 74%. And of course, our weather forecast for today, no surprises. Humid with mostly clear skies, but a few clouds may be wandering around. A high of 30 and a low of 22. Tomorrow... Humid with mostly clear skies, a high of 30 and a low of 22. And then Wednesday, clear skies through the day with a high temperature of 30 and a low temperature of 19. I have other bits of news to share with you, starting with this one that comes from Banderas News. Banderas News reports that friend and performer Amy Armstrong is back at Nacho Daddy for a series of performances from May 18th through June 1st. All the information can be found in this article, but I also went and found the Facebook event that corresponds to these performances, and I will be so happy to include this in the show notes. Also this week, just a reminder that our friend Lucy from Echo a Mano has, is um, having another one of those pop-up art shows that they do once a month. And this one is going to take place at Captain Don's on Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. This will be happening concurrently as our Spotlight Episode 9, which will be on May 15, also this Wednesday, uh, at 4 o'clock, where we're hoping to enlist at least one event organizer um, I've had a couple of people contact me with inquiries, but we don't have anyone set up for Wednesday just yet. If this changes, you will be the first to know. And now I have a little cultural something. I'm going to show you something that you may or may not have tried yet. And I'm curious to know who has tried a pajarete yet. Now, what is a pajarete? You're probably wondering. A pajarete is something that you will find if you spend any time in rural areas of our state. It is a beverage enjoyed by ranchers early in the morning, and it consists, well, its two primary ingredients are 
leche bronca or raw milk direct from the from the cow and 96 proof alcohol other ingredients can include chocolate coffee um, sugar vanilla and uh, fans of this traditional beverage swear by it as it is a great way to start the day if you ask me however i have never craved one and I'm guilty as charged. It's one of those things that, you know, the, the milk coming out of the cow's tit and then going into my mouth gives me a little bit of the what? And I don't know why, because a lot of people enjoy them. If you are curious enough and you're wondering, where can I find the pajarete in Puerto Vallarta? The only place where I have seen them right here in town or near the city is at Canopy Rivers Restaurant. You can you can ask for a pajarete because <clears throat> they have cows hanging around. So there you have it. That was my question for you. If you've tried a pajarete uh, and you liked it or disliked it, let us know in the comments. And this gives us a good segue to dive into your comments and see what everybody is up to this morning. Let's see what we have. Lots of good mornings. It's great to see you all. Dan and Kathy finally have internet again. Oh my goodness, how could you survive without it? I'm glad that you're all set. Let's see, let's see. Mihal reports a beautiful breeze, and that is something that has been really wonderful at least this year. I don't remember if it was this breezy last year but one of the things that i very much appreciated even though it's getting warmer here in town is the fact that there are breezes going on uh -pa -dum -pa -dum -pa -dum -pa. well the hara is mostly pavements uh then that is the problem no trees well i kind of beg to differ with you angelica one of the things that i personally love about going to guadalajara is seeing so many trees i mean when you compare it to to downtown puerto vallarta i mean downtown puerto vallarta has absolutely no trees unless you're walking on the malecon or you're up in el cerro <clears throat> so but i do recognize there are certain parts of guadalajara that do not have any trees you are correct in that regard uh let's see um ah ooh, claudio says we have tried the pajarete and so has lucas's mom and it is also available at rancho mi abuelo rancho mi abuelo is a wonderful place to visit up the hills um in el jorullo the 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 ejido el jorullo uh let's see what else claude says it's yummy I don't know that I'll ever get around to trying a pajarete. I think I should, just to say I did it, and why not? Uh, 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 da -da -da -da. Albert says, my friend who owns Otto's restaurant invited me to his ranch to try it, but unfortunately it was canceled next year. Uh, <laughs> Mark says, I've tried a pajarete without the milk. Well, my dear Mark, it, the point of the pajarete is to combine the alcohol with the raw milk. That is funny. Um, Chris says, I've had tuba, 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 tuba on the beach. It's very good, but I don't know what it is. You know, Chris, I don't know what tuba is. I think it is made out of sugar cane, but that's something else that I haven't tried. And I will definitely add it to my list of research because it's something that I'm not familiar with. I mean, I've seen the tuba uh, people walking around trying to sell the beverage, and I understand that it's very refreshing, but it, that is something else that I have yet to try. What is um, the craziest, most unexpected food that you've had here in Puerto Vallarta? And we don't have a shortage. I mean, there there's all the bugs that we eat, there's cuitlacoche, which is that fungus on the corn that is a delicacy for some. For some people, it's kind of like, ooh, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I think ultimately the important thing here is to try to find safe and user-friendly ways to expand our comfort level. And that is always a good idea. 
And this brings us to the end of today's coffee and headlines. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be one of those weeks in which we dig and dig and dig and try to find good news. We're getting close to the elections. So a lot of the news items that I see out there have to do with elections and they're not necessarily user friendly or, or, or relevant to what we bring to the table here at Coffee and Headlines. But we are going to continue making those connections as we enjoy doing. For now, <clears throat> let me switch screens to this one. Boom. We're going to get started with the rest of the day. I have things that I'm working on that I want to share with you. And of course, I hope everybody will start your week with the best of spirits. Uh, stay happy, stay friendly, stay connected, stay cool. And most important, stay in touch. I'll see you again soon.